Hello and welcome to another S'more RV fun review, how-to, more of a how-to on this one. Living here in Northeast Ohio, we just brought the camper home, came out of storage where it was nice and warm, brought it home, looked for a warm weekend, had one, and then all of a sudden they're calling for snow. So, a little panic because you think to yourself, oh boy, should I winterize? Should I not? Should I roll the dice? Well, it's going down to about 29 through this week, so I'm just going to be safe rather than be sorry, and I'm going to go ahead and winterize the RV real quick. Now, you might say it's going to take you a lot longer to winterize an RV than just coming out here. Why would you do all the work? Well, this 32 BHDS by Jayco is super easy to winterize. Um, there's a lot of easy access, the panels to shut things on and off. So I'm just going to take through what I have to do to winterize. And for most of you, it might be similar. For some of you, it might be different. But it's a matter of just knowing which valves you got to switch around to avoid the hot water tank. Um, and also making sure that you're just getting that antifreeze out to every little area uh, in the camper that distributes water. So I'm just going to run you through that real quick. So in order to do this, I've got about four gallons here. Not about. i got exactly four gallons worth of the RV and Marine by Supertech uh, antifreeze. It says negative 50. Thank God I don't have to worry about that. Four gallons is going to be enough for me because I just want to run it through all of my valves and then also get all my P-traps underneath. Um, at least full so that I'm keeping track, you know, at least to know that I have this in there. So I got four gallons. The last time I did this, uh, when I left it out much longer, I only used two and it works. So I said, you know what, two that time, I probably wanted four, I'm going to use four. So underneath my sink here is where we have our access. This is where our little pump is. So you can see here we got the water pump and then we got this little valve. So when this valve's turned like this, if you're pumping water, it's going to run it through there. But if you want to actually use the hose here, all I have to do is switch my valve around. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a corner turn to the left. And now it's going to bypass uh, the main where the water would be coming in. And it's going to use my little valve here. And then over here, halfway through the RV, we got our access panel to the hot water tank. So you could kind of follow along here. And this blue normally is just going to run. And when this valve's turned like it is, it's going to pump into the hot water tank and then it's going to come back out and go back through the system. So we want to avoid getting that antifreeze in the hot water tank. Should you happen to get it in, it's just a matter of flushing it out. It's not going to kill it. It's not going to destroy it. You just want to make sure you flush the heck out of it if you do that. Same thing here. I'm going to go ahead and just give these a half turn. Make sure they're all the way turned. And I got two of them for the bypass because now... It's running up. I want to avoid it going in where it would come out. I'm going to give that a half turn as well. And now my system's ready to start pumping. So what I generally like to do is make sure that I get all of my uh, faucets opened. And since we have the bathroom here, I'll make sure I do that as well. And actually, I don't have to worry about the hot one. Even though there's a little bit of air pumping out. Down here. Ooh, toilet. Someone used the toilet. Didn't tell me. God dang it, people. All right, we got the toilet open. And then outside, I have a kitchen. But oftentimes, what I think people will forget to do is your shower area, too. So you want to make sure that you have all of those valves opened up. So coming out here, a little bit of water dripping out. I already turned that one on. And then my shower's around the other side. I'm going to go take care of that and then come back in. You can also see under here, my water valve open since I kind of allowed air to come in. So I know that this is open. I want to make sure that I close off my low drain points as well. So those are turned to the left. I'm going to go ahead and turn this one because if not, then it's just going to start spewing all of my antifreeze out. So I'm going to go ahead and go turn the shower one off because I need my key. And I'll come back. All right, so I got the shower on the outside turned off. So I only kind of half turn everything when I'm going to do one of these pumps because... I want it to kind of evenly distribute if I have one open versus all of them. And then what I'll start to do is just periodically turn them off after my system's running. So up here is my little control. It's my water pump. I'm not going to turn it on yet. I want to make sure I get my valve in here. I'm going to stick my hose all the way down into the bottom. Then I'm going to go up, turn on my pump. And I see that it's already starting to go. And I could hear it starting to come out. 
So I could hear it draining in the back. I could hear it going back here, but I see I still have clear water coming through. So that's good. Now I'm starting to see pink. That's exactly what I want. Same thing over here in my toilet. I'm gonna wanna go until I start to see pink. And now I heard it stop because it already sucked that entire one clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that. I'm gonna stick it in the next one. I'm gonna go outside where I hear it draining the most. Oh, you can see, you gotta check everything. This should be uh, how dummies do it. Now you can see I'm just draining it out because those weren't actually my drain points. These were it's always something. Always something draining out. Okay, now that we're not being stupid. So you can see I got it coming here. I'm gonna go ahead, turn that one down. Come around to my shower in the back. We're spraying there. Go ahead and close that down. And this way, I'm pumping everything on the inside. Oh, always a disaster. You know what, there's always something you forget to do or you mistake. When you come out of a whole year season or an off season, a couple months, you just seem to forget everything. So this one's now drained. I'm gonna go into three because I put one whole gallon on the ground outside. And then in your sink, I like to make sure too that I flip flop this. So I wanna make sure I'm filling both because I do have that low drain there, but obviously the, the P-traps it, but I just wanna make sure I'm coating kind of everything. Once I got it coming there real clear, good there. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. I'm gonna run that one a little more. And then here too, I'm just gonna put some in there because I know it's going down to the, uh, the flush out. But I also wanna make sure that I just fill that toilet part a little bit with the pink. So there you go. I've now cleared out my fourth. And I think three is good. I mean, I had solid pink on everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. Now, what did we learn so far? Make sure you know which valves are draining and which aren't. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my pump because I don't wanna burn anything up. And now that I'm done doing that and I've run it through the system, I am still going to keep my hot water tank valve closed. I'm just gonna make a note to myself to know that once we get out to a campground or we do our first camping, we're using water, that I wanna make sure I flush the whole system. And then I wanna go ahead and clean, turn these on so I don't get any residual that pumps into the hot water tank just because I want to avoid that. So this is a quick how-to and if you see I did that, that's about six and a half minutes, seven minutes almost with my major gallon mistake where I dumped it all over the ground. Um, easy to do. And that way you're at least, you have a little bit of peace of mind about what you're doing. I'm going to keep the extra tank I got left over. So three gallons was plenty to get it run through the whole system. Um, and I know that I'm at least filling up P-traps and everything's cleaned out uh, at least far as water goes and it's mixed in there. So we're, I don't have to worry about freezing. During the day, it's getting up in temperature, so I'm a little bit more comfortable knowing that. But at night, I just don't want to risk it. So that's my little how-to on how to quickly winterize if you're living in like a Northeast Ohio and you got to get your RV winterized. That's the way to do it. So if you like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. For more, give us a like. If you have any comments, even the mean ones, we like reading them. So make sure you leave that down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.